Good evening. In Rodney Livingston's absence, we want to welcome you to the service tonight at Leoma. And we trust that Rodney is having a safe trip wherever he's at today. We know Joshua spoke to you this morning, did a very good job. He stepped on a little of the area that I was going across, but that is fine. As long as you preach about the Bible, you're going to run into each other, and that's a good thing. And now because the weather has so well cooperated, with, I'll give you the title to the lesson, How Noah Built the Boat. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Paid debt is the topic of the lesson this evening. If you would have the Bible, turn to um, Exodus chapter 22. Exodus chapter 22. Have you ever longed for the day that a debt was paid off? I wonder what you did on that day. I wonder if you celebrated on that day. I wonder if you paid off a car. Did, did you celebrate in some way? Did you go and spend the next month's payment on something else? Did you have a party? Did you go and make a commitment on another car because that one was paid off? Did you relax, maybe, and sit back and think that that was good to have that weight off your shoulders? Maybe when you paid for a house, if you have, what a relief that must be to be relieved of the debt that so long has plagued you. A farm, to pay for that land, to say it's now mine, lock, stock, and barrel. Or well, maybe it's as simple as a refrigerator. Maybe you rented one to own it, and you needed to pay for that appliance. And you were excited, and you hoped, oh, I hope it don't tear up. It's all mine now. There's some celebration that goes with a paid debt. There is a weight that's lifted because a debt is lifted. There is a commercial that was on many years ago, and I don't know how many, but there was a man driving a quite expensive lawnmower on a very nice manicured lawn, and in behind him was a two-story nice house, and there was a real nice car in behind him, one of the upscale models, and in behind the car was a boat sitting in the driveway, a large boat, the runabout boat, not, not practical like a bass boat, you know. It's one of those you just run around in and got the canopy on it, and he's riding out through there, and he's got the steering wheel and he's moving it back and forth looking around real sheepish like and he says why am I up to my neck in debt now just never forget that commercial sometimes we ask why am I so deep in debt financially or spiritually why do I have the weight of sin so heavy on me why is the debt that I have weighing on me as heavy as it is. How did I get in that position? Have I not made payments on that debt? Can I pay that debt off? Can I get that relieved? Let's look at two or three things. One thing, is debt serious? In Exodus chapter 22, there are some ideas about how you make restitution when you have a debt to someone, a trespass against someone, an obligation against someone, all could be defined as a debt. In Exodus chapter 22, verse 1, if a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he shall restore five oxen for an ox, four sheep for a sheep. Does that sound a little steep? Repay five times or repay four times? Verse 5, if a man causes a field or vineyard to be grazed, and lets loose his animal, and he feeds it in another man's field, he shall make restitution from the best of his own field and the best of his own vineyard. Yes, there's an obligation against someone that you've done wrong against, and restitution must be made. Verse 6, if fire breaks out and catches in thorns so that the stacked grain, so that the stacked grain, standing grain, or the field is consumed, he who kindled the fire shall surely make restitution. Verse 7, 
If a man delivers to his neighbor money or articles to keep, and it is stolen out of the man's house, if the thief, if the thief is found, he shall pay double. Verse 9. For any kind of trespass, whether it concerns an ox, a donkey, a sheep, or clothing, or for any kind of lost thing which another claims to be his, the cause of both parties shall come before the judges. Whomever the judges condemned shall pay double to his neighbor. You know there's this saying about criminals that they must pay their debt to society. You hear that a lot. Well, when there is guilt, when there is debt, when there is a weight, there is something that needs to be restored. There is an owed obligation there. There is a progression in this process. There is the sin. There is the guilt that goes with that sin. But then there can be the atonement for that. Do you remember back in the 80s? And I'm thinking about these... Um, the restitution here and the amount of restitution you have to make in Exodus. I remember when you could go to the bank and put some money in the bank and earn 12% interest. But there's also a man I talked to here that was in this assembly this morning and he was building a house and he told me in the 80s he was building a house and he had borrowed money to build the house to resell and he was paying 24% on his money. It's pretty serious restitution, ain't it? But in Exodus, it's five times and four times, and you return the best that you have to make restitution. That's quite severe more than it was even then. Turn over to Leviticus chapter 5 for just a minute. Leviticus chapter 5. There is a ritual in the process of returning to a restored state. We'll pick up just a, a sentence or two after of the first few verses. If a person, chapter 5, verse 1, if a person sins in hearing the utterance of an oath, and it is a witness, verse 2, if a person touches any unclean thing, verse 3, or if he touches human uncleanliness, whatever uncleanliness with which a man may be defiled, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, he shall be guilty. Or if a person swears, speaking thoughtlessly with his lips, to do evil or to do good, whatever it is that a man may pronounce by an oath, and he is unaware of it, when he realizes it, he shall be guilty in any of these matters. And it shall be when he's guilty in any of these matters that he shall confess that he sinned in that thing. He shall bring his trespass, suffering, offering to the Lord for his sin which he's committed, a female from the flock, a lamb, or a kid of the goats as a sin offering. So the priest shall make atonement for him concerning his sin. If he's not able to bring a lamb, or shall bring to the, then he shall bring to the Lord for his trespass which he's committed two turtle doves, or two young pigeons, one as a sin offering, the other as a burnt offering. He shall bring them to the priest, who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first, and wring off its head from its neck, but shall not divide it completely. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood of the sin offering on the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be drained out at the base of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second as a burnt offering according to the prescribed manner. So the priest shall make atonement on his behalf for a sin which he's committed. And it shall be forgiven him. There's very specific ritual here. In order to get to the forgiven state of the debt, of the obligation, of the sin, and to be forgiven of it, very specific rules, very specific rituals that must be done in order to get to that state of restitution. We find that in a lot of ways when we repay debt. Oh, you've got to pay every payment. You've got to pay it on time. If you don't pay it on time, there is a late charge. I'm sorry, sir, we can't, uh, we can't let this late charge go 
we didn't get we didn't get the payment till after the first. You know those routines, and you've been through that probably sometimes. Maybe you accidentally forgot the payment, and you get a call from the collection agency, and they'll say, "I'm sorry, I can do nothing about this. My manager's not here, and I don't have the authority to do anything else." We get those calls, or we talk to those people, and we find out there's very specifics that they want you to meet. It looks like the Lord is very specific about coming back to a relationship with someone and very specific about coming into a relationship back to Him. In Leviticus chapter 6, 1 through 4, the Lord spake to Moses saying, If a person sins and commits a trespass against the Lord by lying to his neighbor about what was delivered to him for safekeeping, or about a pledge, or about a robbery, or if he is extorted from his neighbor, or if he's found that, or if he has found what was lost and lies concerning it, and swears falsely in any one of these things that a man may do in which he sins, then it, then it shall be because he sinned and is guilty. He shall restore what he stolen, or that thing which he has extorted, or what was delivered to him for safekeeping, or the lost thing which he has found. Even with the tongue, we can owe some debt because we've sinned with the, with the tongue. If we have sin, then we have debt. If we have debt, then we have an obligation. If we have an obligation, then we have payment. Let's look at the other side of debt just for a minute. Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus is teaching the disciples about prayer. We know this passage as we call it sometimes the Lord's Prayer. But as he taught the disciples about prayer, in chapter 6, verse 9 beginning, In this manner therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Verse 12, I find myself with a gap there. As we forgive, and forgive us our debts, we ask God, Please forgive us of what we've done. But then as we pray, the other side of it is, as we forgive our debtors. That's where I have the gap. That's where I have the difficulty. That's where I find myself short. If God forgives me the way I forgive others, it's easy for me to find a large gap there. God wants me to have a heart like his. In order to erase debt, sometimes it takes a forgiveness. Sometimes, in a monetary way, we don't get that repayment that we thought we would get. But then a heart can extend forgiveness. And then he has a heart like Jesus had toward us. Turn to Matthew 18, if you would. This is one of the parables that we've heard about already. Uh, in the series that Rodney has been teaching us, I believe. But let's recap quickly. Matthew 18, beginning with verse 21. Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And he offers a number. He says up to seven times. Seems reasonable, don't it? Should not I extend my forgiveness seven times to somebody that has a debt against me, an obligation, a sin? Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. He multiplied it, didn't he? He multiplied it greatly. Don't you think Jesus is letting him know seven's not sufficient? 70 times seven is not sufficient. Whatever number you want to come up with, Peter, it's going to be a multiple of that. You need to understand that forgiveness does not really end. It is to be extended. 
from this teaching to be forgiven, we then must learn to forgive. There is debt sometimes that's not forgiven, and then there's debt sometimes that is forgiven. Paul had a lot of debt. Paul put Christians in, Christ in prison. Paul had Christians killed. Paul put them in jail all the time thinking he was doing what was right. But when God got his heart and got his attention and he got to preaching for Jesus, then Paul could be relieved of all that. He could be forgiven of that. Isn't that in incredible to think that Paul could be relieved of that debt? It's just amazing to think about that. Paul went on to preach for Christ and lived as a forgiven, as a forgiven servant of God. Romans chapter 6, if you would. That's where our scripture reading was from, and thank you, Barry, for reading that. Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 9. Noel, I know you forgot your notes this morning. I forgot to bring this book in, up here with me. Romans 6, beginning with verse 3. We've talked about briefly, is debt serious? And I think we understand from, through God and through his people that debt is serious. We look at the other side of debt. Are we responsible for being a forgiving person in debt? We are. And another part of it is how do you lift that debt? How do you get it off of your shoulders? Romans 6, beginning in verse 3, Do you not know that as many of us were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore we were buried with him through baptism into death that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we've been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we, al we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should be no longer slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we also shall live with him. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives... He lives to God. Jesus came and suffered that death, and he died to conquer death. He died to conquer sin. For himself? No. For us. And it's through him you were able to lift that debt, that obligation, that payment that you owe is through him. But what we owe is not the removing of sin. He is the one that paid that debt. Our debt is to live for him. And that's what we pay with our life. Just one time. Just one lifetime. We live for him. But he's already paid the debt off. There was a stamp that we used to use at my dad's store, and he used it for years. Whenever a bill was paid, you had your ink pad and you had your rubber stamp and you stamped the ink pad and got, got ink on that, on that stamp that said paid and you would put paid. If you went to the bank and paid a loan off, they would get the stamp out and they would ink it up and mark paid on it. I know you may have experienced that before. What a great feeling that is to get that stamp 
that says this is paid. Jesus did that on the cross. He stamped, it, he stamped paid on your account. All you need to do is fulfill your obligation to him. 316 is the song of invitation. If you have a book, if you'll pull that out and read that along, 316. Jesus paid it all. Gone is all my debt of sin. A great change is brought within. And to live I now begin, risen from the fall. Yet the debt I did not pay, someone died for me one day. Sweeping all the debt away, Jesus paid it all. Oh, I hope to please him now, light of joy is on my brow. As at his dear feet I bow, safe within he is love. Making he is the debt I owed, freedom true he has bestowed. So I'm singing on the road, to my home above. Sinner, not for me alone did the Son of God atone. Your debt, too, he made his own on the cruel tree. Come to him with all your sin. Be as white as snow within. Full salvation you may win and rejoice with me. Is debt a weight on your shoulders? Is your sin weighing you down? I believe it was for Adam and Eve, don't you? For when God showed up in the garden, they hid. What about for Judas that betrayed Christ? He hung himself for his sin. Yes, the debt of sin is a heavy burden to bear. But we can lay aside that weight. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2 describes that process. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set, in before, that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus has paid the debt for you, and he offers you a weight lifting of that off of your shoulders where you have to bear it no more. If you have a need to respond to the Lord's invitation, would you come while we stand and sing?